Good evening, everybody. Very happy to be here for the OBS 50th anniversary celebrations, Outward Bound School. I attended the 40th anniversary celebrations as well, 10 years ago. And last time we took a boat ride to see, we went around to your other facilities on Pulau Ubi and met some of the young OBS participants there. And it brought back many fond memories of the time when I was a student here. In 1967, age 15 years old, like many of you today. I attended one of OBS's first intakes. The school had been set up by Dr. Go King Sui, who was deputy chairman of the People's Association. The British Army had been running a holiday adventure camp here in Pulau Ubin ever since the late 50s, before the People's Association took over. So to get off to a running start, the first official OBS courses continued to be run by the British Army officers. And there were two British Ang Mo majors who headed the operations. Many of the instructors were NCOs, non-commissioned officers from the British Army, but locally recruited, Chinese, Malays, Indians. My own instructor, I was in Tenzing Watch. I'm sure some of you are still in Tenzing Watch was a Malay corporal. And there were other Singapore volunteers seconded from the civil service or the volunteer corps who acted as instructors. Among them, Mr. Pohindran, who was a teacher and scoutmaster in RI. Also, Mr. Matthias Che, who is here today and who reminded me just now, he took the class when we all had to jump off the end of the pier and into the sea. Dr. Goh King Sui set up OBS because he thought it would help to build ruggedness and resi resilience in our young people in those early days of our nationhood. And OBS was rugged in every sense of the word. The facilities and equipment were basic. We had canoes, we had sailing dinghies, we had prismatic compasses and topo maps. Some simple rope and obstacle courses, but not much else. No cutter, certainly no tall ship. The dormitories were makeshift. This was, a badminton, this was a basketball court, and we had a row of dorms here for the boys, and the girls were on the other side of the little cove inlet. Nothing compared to the modern facilities and equipment that we see around us today. Pulau Ubin was then even more rural than it now is. There were prawn ponds, granite quarries, still operating, a few kampongs, old rubber plantations, lots of mangrove swamp, and a bit of beach. To us, it seemed like a large and unknown continent. For our final exercise, we spent a whole day hiking from one end to the other, from here to Chik Jawa, where we camped overnight. Today, Ubin is still rustic, but it has much better amenities, including paved roads, and you can cycle or scooter its length in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And actually, I think it's much harder to get lost. My course mates and I found OBS a challenging experience, but we also enjoyed ourselves immensely. My course lasted 17 days, longer than most of the courses OBS now runs, except for your 21-day program. We came from different schools, different social backgrounds, Chinese schools, English schools, different races, boys and girls. We made friends quickly. We had to. We also had to get fit, to learn new skills, to encourage one another along on exercises and adventures. We did map reading and orienteering and often got hopelessly lost. And we went canoeing and sailing through sun and rain. Fifty years ago, the shoreline across opposite Ubin was rural and undeveloped, and we ventured forth from OBS, sailing to Pulau Sleta, canoeing to Coney Island, orienteering in Pongal North. Those 17 days had a lasting impact on us, and certainly on me. We were pushed to our limits, physical as well as psychological. We gained self-confidence, 
we became more resilient. We learned to work with one another as a team. I think that was what Dr. Goh intended. Today, the mission of OBS, to develop mentally and physically rugged youths, to be active citizens, inspired to serve the community, is as relevant as ever. Our children grow up in a much more developed and urbanized environment. There are fewer opportunities to rough it out outdoors, and shelter from bad weather is usually just a few steps away. So I'm very glad, even though it looked dark this, earlier this afternoon, we're out here in the open and not somewhere indoors. <laughs> Nowadays, parents, teachers and schools are also more protective. When our children go camping now, you must put camping in quotation marks, because often they sleep in the school hall or the classroom. Or sometimes, if they're very adventurous, on the floating platform in Marina Bay, <laughs> which we recently had a very serious activity earlier this week. So that sense of nature, the outdoors and adventure, is not quite the same. The boys will eventually do national service, where they will become men, although it's much better if they're already fit, toughened and confident before they're called up. And we want all our young people, girls as well as boys, to be rugged and tenacious, adaptable and resourceful. And here at OBS is where some of that should happen. Outdoor adventure learning is especially useful in imparting these lessons, which are very hard to teach in a classroom. And that's why MCCY and MOE developed the National Outdoor Adventure Education Master Plan this year, last year. And part of the plan is for OBS to build permanent facilities on Coney Island to take in more students. OBS has already started some activities on Coney Island, and I'll be visiting it later on. With expanded facilities, every school girl and school, school boy will have the opportunity to go through OBS at least once during his or her school years. A key part of the OBS experience depends on the instructors. You are the ones who ignite the excitement of the trainees, stretch their limits, encourage their self-discovery, while letting them test and push boundaries in a safe and nurturing environment. Instructors are a special breed of young men and women, well-trained, dedicated, motivated, with positive energy and an optimistic outlook, who enjoy the work and deliberately choose a career path that is less travelled. Many of you were inspired to become OBS instructors after going through the OBS course yourself and realising the impact that good instructors make. You are not just teachers, but also the trainees' friends and mentors. As one aspiring instructor, Angelique Poe, whom I met just now, said, you can inspire the students to be the best version of themselves and to contribute to society, no matter how small they may perceive their contribution to be. So if anybody here today is thinking of becoming an OBS instructor, this is a good opportunity. Speak to the actual instructors, find out what it's like, and maybe make a bold choice. When I attended OBS in 1967, I didn't imagine that I'd be back here half a century later celebrating its 50th anniversary. Since then, generations of young people have benefited from the OBS experience, just as I did. I hope many more in future generations will have the same opportunity and will find it as enriching and worthwhile. We have one of the best outward-bound centres in the world, and now we are expanding OBS to make it better. If OBS does its work well, Singapore will always have rugged youth and rugged citizens who embody the OBS spirit to serve, to strive, and not to yield. Happy 50th birthday, OBS.